Mills presents Bride and Groom. The honor of your presence is requested at the wedding of Miss Wanda Lee Wilkes and Mr. Don George Seifert. Hello and welcome to Bride and Groom. Today we're going to hear the story of a modern Cinderella. Like Cinderella, she grew up without her family around her. And like Cinderella, she found happiness and her Prince Charming at a masquerade. It's an unusual true love story, and after we meet the people who lived it, we'll be guests at their wedding with services by Dr. John S. Wimbish of the Calvary Baptist Church. Now I'd like a lovely bride. She's Miss Wanda Lee Wilkes. Her bridegroom is Mr. Don George Seifert. And Wanda, you're a very lovely uh, uh, Cinderella, and that's a very pretty dress too, like Cinderella wore. What, uh, what is it like? Well, it's made out of skin or satin with uh, Chantilly lace and gloves to match. Oh, I see. Well, now, Don, you're the lucky man. Tell us about you. Well, John, I'm 24 years old. I was born in Ohio and have lived for nine years out in Arizona. Went two years to Phoenix College there and two years to Hardin Simmons University. Fine. Wanda, tell us about you now. I'm 22 years old and I was uh, reared in Fort Worth, Texas in the Lena Pope home, but now I live with my mother in San Antonio, Texas. Fine. Well, what's a Lena Pope home, Wanda? Well, John, that's a home for children of broken homes. You see, my sister and I were put there when I was two and my fa father and mother were divorced. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there until I was 18 and graduated from high school. What was the home like, Wanda? Well, it was a very nice home, John, considering that it was small and they didn't have enough room for all the children. But now they're raising funds to build a new and better home. Oh, well, that's a very worthy cause, and we all wish them success. But tell us what happened to you after you left the home, Wanda. Well, I went on to college, and I didn't have much money, but my father helped me a little, and then church groups helped me along. But most of the time, I worked for my room and board, where I took care of children and did housework and got my degree from mm -hmm. Hardin-Simmons University. And you were at Hardin-Simmons too, Don? That's right. My brother and I were there. We were working our way through college, doing odd jobs. Mm -hmm. I was station manager of our campus station. When did you, uh, when did you, excuse me? And uh, I was going to tell you how I met Wanda. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> at, a co at a costume party, it was. She was wearing a... Uh, masquerade, huh? Yes, mm -hmm. it was a masquerade. And she was wearing a red a gay 90s bathing suit with high heels and a parasol. I guess that's what caught my eye because... Uh -huh. We uh, we had a few dates later after that, and uh, got acquainted, got acquainted with, with each other. How long ago was this meeting of yours? Well, it was about two years ago. Did you like each other right from the beginning? Well, no, not right at the beginning. John. What did he do, Wanda, that made things... Well, he was a little sarcastic, we both were, but uh, after we got cast in a play together, he would walk me home every once in a while, and then finally one day he asked me to a, a radio club picnic. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what was the cause of this not liking each other in the beginning, Don? Well, I guess we were just both stubborn, mm -hmm. and uh, I well, took her out on the first day, she wouldn't let me kiss her, and I... Well, that was stubborn, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I was very that good kind of uh, threw things off. So, well, later, uh, I took her to a show, and we got really acquainted. We knew that we liked each other. And, and then what happened when you took her home? Then I got that kid. Good, that sounds <laughs> a lot better. How long before you knew you were in love, Wanda? Well, I knew I was in love with him about three weeks later. But uh, it took him about six months before he knew he was in love with me. Oh. Actually, the way it happened, he asked, I, I thought he was going to ask me to a, a banquet. But it seemed that he asked one of my best girlfriends, and I didn't get to go. So it ended up that neither one of us went, and we were, I was very unhappy, and I think he realized then that I was actually in love with him. Yeah, well, when did he realize he was in love? Well, he went on a choir tour in March, and when he came back after five days away from me, I knew as soon as I saw him that he knew right then that he was in love. Uh, and that's, I guess, when your happiness really started. Yes, it really did, John. John. Then we uh, went. I went to Arizona to be with him during the summer and got a job. And after we became engaged, we decided that I ought to go back to college since I just had one more year to get my teacher certificate. Yes, and I have three more years mm -hmm. to finish for a religious mm -hmm. education major mm -hmm. in music. And you're going to, uh, you, that's going to be your career, Don? That's right. That's mm -hmm. right, John. And, uh, well, he's going to be in the Baptist church, of course, that's our church. And, uh, we're going to be very happy, I'm sure, but the thing we want more than anything else, John, is a very happy home, since I've never had one. Well, I, right. I think more than most people realize the importance, Juan, and I think you both have the qualifications going to making a happy home. I'd like to meet your attendants. I see them standing by, listening very attentively to your love story. John, I'd like to, for you to meet my maid of honor, Jan Owen. How do you do? John, this is Jean Olby. How do you How do? You? I'm happy to know you, and we have for you, as best man, these matched keepsake wedding rings, the exquisite diamond band with three square-cut diamonds for Wanda, the plain gold matching keepsake band. For Don. And your love song, you've asked Bill to sing one. Always. Now, as our bride and groom and their attendants leave for the ceremony, Phil Hannah sings their love song. I'll be loving you always with the love 
that's true always When the things you plan Need a helping hand I will understand Always, always Days may not be fair Just a day, not for just a year, but always. Christ and his church. For the Apostle Paul said, the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Wanda, Dawn, it gives me great joy to know that both of you are determined to build your marriage upon the precepts of God's inspired word, the Holy Bible, and that Christ Jesus will always be a welcomed guest in your home. Will you repeat after me? I don, I don, take thee wander, take thee wander, to be my wedded wife, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, till death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance, according to God's holy ordinance, and thereto, and thereto, I plight thee. My trunk. I plight thee my trunk. I wander. I wander. Take thee down. Take thee down. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to obey. To love and to obey. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And there too. And there too. I give thee. My I give thee my trunk. With this ring, with this ring, I be wed. I be wed. And with all my worldly goods, and with all my worldly goods, I be endowed. I be endowed. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. you want to give this ring to Don as a token of your love for him? If so, say I do. I do. Will you, Don, take this ring as a token of Wanda's love for you and will you wear it as a pledge of your love for her? If so, say I will. I will. For as much then as Wanda and Don have covenanted together according to the teachings of the scriptures, I as a minister of the gospel declare that they are husband and wife. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Let us pray. May the blessings of thy God wait upon thee, and the sun of glory shine round about thy head. May the gates of plenty, honor, and happiness be always open to thee and thine. And finally, when length of years makes thee tired of earthly joys, and the curtains of death close around thy bed, May the angels of God take care that the expiring lamp of light shall not receive one rude blast to hasten its extinction. For we pray in the name of our crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That moment is a dream come true for Wanda and Don, and more dreams are coming true too because we've planned an exciting honeymoon for them. Let's start with this honeymoon car, a 1952 Pontiac sedan with dual range hydromatic that's gonna speed them to that romantic spot at Mount Pocono, Pennsylvania, the famous Pocono Manor. Wanda and Don will be personal guests of manager John M. Crandall of the Pennsylvania State Hotel Association, so all the facilities for which the resort has become so well known will be at their disposal. A championship golf course, horseback riding through the woods, canoeing on the beautiful Blue Lake, hiking 
along the manor's own honeymoon trail, where there's even a private stream for trout fishing on the hotel's ground. Don and Wanda can just sit on top of the mountain and watch the world go by, whatever they choose to do. We know that Wanda and Don will have the honeymoon of a lifetime at beautiful Pocono Manor. Here they come. Congratulations, Don. Thank you. I understand you two are just starting a home together right now. We have a beautiful set of 12 place settings of Queen Wonderful. Best silverware for you. Beautiful Queen Best. <laughs> and real Texas man-sized bath towels by Canon, too. And, of course, hand towels and washcloths in your own color choice, plus a full set of Canon's fine comb spun for kale well, Hudson Makers, the world's number one paper napkins, a beautiful copper chafing dish by Carol Stapel, plus a full year supply of each of the four wonderful Hudson napkins to dress up your table, cut down your work. And a SoGem sewing machine, too. And, of course, the SoGem has oh, a special handy feature okay. called Susie, the right-hand miracle stitcher to make sewing easy and fun. And for your kitchen, a giant size Westinghouse frost free refrigerator. Just think of the food, money, and shopping time you're going to save with all that storage space, the large size freezer compartment, human drawers, and oh, all sorts of special things in your Westinghouse refrigerator. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Build in home entertainment for both of you because you're going to have this superb Spartan Hastings model television set. Has a large 17 inch screen. You can't beat it. Has a beautiful cabinet and is finished in hand rubbed mahogany. Three more gifts this Betty Crocker picture cookbook with 2,000 tested recipes, a big supply of fine General Mills products, Wonderful. and a oh. talking motion picture of your wedding day. If you want to take this down, congratulations <laughs> to you, and thank you for sharing your happiness with us. Good wishes for a long, happy married life. We'll see you at the We'll meet again in just a Bye. moment.
another daughter banquet. This ain't the chicken plucking convention. <laughs> no, I'm trying to tell you. Now, we were expecting someone else to send the program. We were expecting uh, a mini pearl. Oh, well, I'm in the right place then. Yeah, you I'm, are? I, You're I'm, not mini pearl. Well, I, I'm cousin Susie Bell. I, I'm filling in for Minnie Pearl. She plumb got sick, don't you know? And, yeah. and, and so she asked me about coming to her place. Is that okay? Well, all right. Oh, good. Sure. I, I, she, she always makes me out this long list, but I'm supposed to take her place. And I couldn't remember which place this was. I'm so glad I got here at the right place. I'm glad you did. Oh, well, how <laughs> I'm just so proud to be here. Oh, Minnie told me to tell you that, don't you know? I, I'm sorry I ain't as pretty as Millie. Uh, you mean, Minnie, because you see, I, I really can't help it. Because when they handed out looks, I thought they said, whoops. So I said, give me a funny one. And they did. <laughs> of course, I, my, my mammy, she always taught me that pretty is as pretty does, don't you know? And clothes don't make the man. Of course, that Uncle Nabob, he always speaks up and he says, No, but you sure can go a lot of places with them that you can't go without them. <laughs> That's Uncle Nabob for you. <laughs> of course, I, I, I have a real problem, though, I, about, about my looks. You know, I always get a hat to try to, to cover my face because it looks like I wore it and forgot to iron it. <laughs> But, but you know, one day, the other day, I, it come, it come my feller's birthday, I went down and this photographer feller, he come around to our town, you know, and he just comes about once a year. So I went down there and I thought, I'm going to get my picture took for my boy feller. So I went down there and I dressed up in my prettiest dress. I made it all myself. And, and I smiled so neat for that photographer feller, don't you know? And friends, when them pictures come back, I looked at them and I said, them pictures don't near do me justice. That fellow said, lady, you don't need justice. What you need is mercy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't appreciate that at all, don't you know? Well, anyway, uh, Minnie, she, she told me, you know, that, that she was going to have a nice mother-daughter banquet here. And I never seen such nice-looking people here. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I'm, I'm always having trouble getting off of the bus at the wrong place. And that's the reason I wasn't sure that I was in the right place. Because when I come to the big city, folks, I don't know how in the world you get around. It's the best rate. That's what it is. Well, but, but, but the last time that this happened to me, it was terrible. I, I, I tell you what happened. I come down, I got off that bus, and right there in front of me was the biggest play taken born I ever seen in my life. It was. And, and you know there was a bunch of people going into that there born. I mean, that there was this little smokehouse right there out front, don't you know? So I decided, well, I'd just go over there and see what was going on. And he said, uh, that'll be four dollars, please. And I says, well, what they are doing here? Well, I figured they was having a square dance, you know? Because I love to hug square dance with the best of them. So, so I give that feller my four dollars, and I walked in there, and there weren't nary a couple out there on that whole big floor. There weren't. There was just a bunch of people sitting on each side of these church benches, don't you know? Well, I stood there a while, and I figured, well, I'm going to go back and get my four dollars back. But before I could go get my four dollars back, people, two bunches a uh, tall, skinny fellers come running out of one end of that there big dark uh, big board and nothing but the under drawers. They did. Oh, what? Well, I'm glad to say somebody must have called the police because here comes this big old fat feller out there a tooting on a police whistle, don't you know? But before he could get on to them there fellers not having any clothes on, they got in a fight over that there big ball he was a talking. Well, you know, he shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't. Because them fellas, they got in the biggest fight I ever seen in my life. They were kicking each other and hitting each other and knocking each other down and pushing one another. And, oh, well, it was terrible, friend. Well, pretty soon, one of them there fellas, they got that there ball, and they took off down at one end of that there big part like a chicken and a fish worm. They did. And you know what they see down there? 
Well, I looked up there and somebody had taken these planks, don't you know? And they nailed them up there and they put this big manor net up there. Well, I, I know right then what that there fella figured. He figured that if he could get that there ball and that manor net, he could come back later. When all the other fellas was gone, he could get it for himself. I know that's what he thought. But it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't. I want you to know, they was a hoe and that man neck. They was. Well, pretty soon to know one of them there big fellas, he got that ball and he took off that other of that there big ball. And friends, there was another better net down there. There was. Well, i telling you, I was so excited about that. But you won't believe this. But I seen it with my own eyes. They was a hole and that mentor net too. They was! Well, but you know what? Them fellas, they couldn't get it in their head. They couldn't, they couldn't. And they just kept on doing that all night long. Well, pretty soon I decided I'm gonna get up and get out of here because I done walks into one of them there crazy houses. <laughs> Cause friends, I figured it this way, that in a fella, would come and run out in that big barn like that with nothing on it, with under drawers, and spend the whole evening a trying to get a ball to stay in a internet with a hole in it. You've got to be crazy. <laughs> That's the way I figured it. And I got up and I got out of there, friends, and I've been mighty careful where I get off at the bus out ever since. <laughs> Better believe it. Now, you, you, you know, every time I, I, I take Minnie's place, I always sing this song that she likes to sing, and, and it, it, it goes like this, and pretty soon I'm gonna let you sing along with her. Now, this her fella, he looks like he's uh, got a pretty good ear for music. I hope he's got a hole in it. Uh, anyway, uh, but, but, uh, but when it comes time for you to help me out this song, this her fella, he's gonna tell you where to come in. Yeah, I think he knows the song. I think he can help me out. Okay, and this is how it goes. Oh, when you live in the country, everybody is your neighbor on that one thing you can rely. And when they leave you, they always leave you saying, y'all come to see us, bye-bye. Y'all come. Y'all come. Y'all come. Y'all come. come. come to see us when you can. Y'all come. Y'all come. Y'all come. 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 Y'all come to see us now and then. Okay? You will, won't you? Thank you, guys. <laughs>